premiering CBS Wednesday. Let's do it! We're stranding 16 real people on a remote island. They've been given two minutes to salvage whatever they can off this boat. Without food, electricity, or comforts of any kind. I'm not eating no rats till I get hungry. They'll compete for one million dollars and once a week vote to see who stays and who goes. Survivor is the wildest show in history. The Adventure of a Lifetime. Premier CBS Wednesday. Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else with the hope that it all ends in a satisfying conclusion. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end from the time they are introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. Now for reference, we are only going to be observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. While secret scenes may be included for extra content, no future seasons will be mentioned as they have no effect on the story being told here. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And with that... 39 days, 16 people, one survivor. Rudy Bosch, a 72-year-old retired Navy SEAL, was a castaway on Survivor's first ever season, Survivor Borneo. And let's be frank, if you have seen any of my other countless story videos, this one, it's not going to be quite the same. Usually I approach the game through the lens of the story being told, and while I am still doing that, the lens here is 16 players being split up into two tribes in Borneo, Malaysia, without any idea of how this game works aside from the fact that someone is voted off every three days. They haven't seen Survivor in any capacity and are essentially making up the rules as they go. Right away both tribes are rushing to gather supplies on the boat and they have to jump off and paddle to shore. We then meet our hero Rudy when he says, Paddling over uh, we had two or three of those boxes in the water dragging them behind the, the raft and that is dumb. I said, let's get them boxes aboard. It'll be a lot easier. You know, that, that's dead weight you got. He was yelling at everybody, let's lose the box. Cut it loose now. He may be 72 years old and an ex-Navy SEAL, but that doesn't mean that this is his world. <laughs> there is such a massive age difference between him and so many of the players that are in this game that Rudy may have a hard time connecting unless he kind of just tones it down. But it is only day one of 39, AKA, this is a marathon, not a sprint. We then see him teaching the tribe about where to build the shelter. And as everyone gets to work, Richard Hatch is like, uh, can we just like stop and talk about the game instead? Like, yeah, okay, buddy, we're over here trying to survive, get with the program. But then we get to know Rudy just a little bit better. The hardest part is hanging around with all these young kids. <laughs> I don't even know what MTV means, you know? And I'm used to being in the military and one guy stands up and gives an order and there's no back talk. If they listen to me, they'd all have haircuts and everything else, you know. We'd be in formation in the morning and all that kind of stuff, but they're not going to do that. I got to fit in, not them. You know, there's more of them than there is of me. Ah, so Rudy does get it. He needs to adjust and he's well aware of it. Though him not knowing what MTV is, is quite funny if looked at today since I'm sure most kids today don't know what MTV is either. It's all come full circle. Their tribe loses immunity thanks to Sonya tripping. And back at camp, Rudy says, I have changed my mind on people over the past few days. Before we got on the island here, I formed opinions about people, but I changed my mind just on that trip in. It's rich for one. I mean, this guy is, he's strong, he's smart. The guy surprises me. You know, he's fat, but he's, <laughs> He's good. I like Rudy. I'm not bothered by his uh, straightforwardness at all. I don't think it even a problem. I, I, I like it that he's saying, hey, do this or hey, do that. But people are thinking of that as very direct and arrogant. That's the word I'm hearing. And I'm thinking to myself, well, they think he's arrogant. Oh my God, I'm out of here. Is Rudy actually hilarious? His words on paper are just fine, but his delivery makes them so much more comedic than one would imagine an old retired Navy SEAL being. Anyways, it is a mess on who people plan on voting out as there doesn't really seem to be any unified vision and it's mostly a free for all. So at tribal council, they all vote. And while Rudy does receive three votes, Sonia gets four. The tribe has spoken. 
so far, Rudy seems to be loved by the storytelling, and given the large edit he's gotten so far, I mean, it is season one, so it's not quite to where we are today. I would still say that Rudy seems to be set up to be a major character of the season, but I am personally worried about the target on his back, given what Kelly said, and because he is 72 and no one else is really that close to him in age on his tribe. How long can he really last? I must mention that this video was selected and created back in October of 2023 at the request of my patrons on Patreon. If you want to pick what videos I make and watch everything up to six months early, then consider joining them. Links in the description. It is now episode two and people are already so hungry that they're resorting to eating rats. Yes, rats. Rudy says, no way am I partaking in this. I ain't that hungry yet. We then see Stacy Stillman say that Rudy is just a massive liability to their tribe in all aspects, since he just does what he wants and she doesn't like that. We then hear from Rudy who says, outside this game, him and Stacy are not gonna be friends. Now keep in mind, the year is 2000. This is a time when calling people gay are normal and a joke since generally it's looked down upon at this time. I need to say all that because this next moment, um, you know, Richard Hatch is gay and he's worried about Rudy finding out and Rudy finds out. I was big mouth the whole time coming over here about being with homosexuals and lesbians. So I found out last night, you know. When he came up here, he said, uh, you wanna talk? I said, no, I don't want to talk. And he was going to tell me he was queer then. The homosexual, he's one of the nicest guys I ever met. And he's good at what he does, you know. He's got leadership ability. And... But anyway, uh, me and Richard got to be pretty good friends. Not in a homosexual way, that's for sure. That went surprisingly well. Not at all what you would expect from a retired Navy SEAL in this era, but hey. That's sweet. Their tribe wins immunity, and in episode three, we learn that not only is Stacy anti-Rudy, but Kelly is as well. Actually, I think we already knew that based on her episode one confessional about him, but it's re-emphasized here. As it turns out, they perceive him to be a negative Nancy, and they say he hasn't adjusted socially at all. It's always his way or the highway. Is this true? Well, from their perspective, it is but no one else has said anything negative about him. Their tribe wins reward, AKA fishing gear. And in a secret scene, we see Sue Hawk ask Rudy if she would have been a good Navy SEAL. Like she's just asking this for fun. And he's like, not if you keep talking, you need to keep your mouth shut to be a Navy SEAL. Amazing, just amazing. Rudy does not care. Their tribe loses immunity. And Rudy says it's either him or Stacy being voted off tonight. He says he's gonna vote for Stacy though, because he doesn't like her and he probably never will. So, at Tribal Council. First vote, Stacy. Next vote, fading, Rudy. Stacy. Rudy. It's two votes for Rudy. Stacy. Stacy. Well, the weather has spoken, and the tribe has spoken. Episode four sees Toggy win reward and immunity, but more importantly is that Rich, Sue, and Kelly form an alliance of people who want to vote together at every tribal council to make it further in the game, and Rudy says he doesn't want to be any part of that. But why, you may be asking? Well, as it turns out, there seems to be people on both tribes morally opposed to the idea of an alliance, and they view this largely social game as instead a wilderness survival thing when really it isn't. They just don't know that yet, I guess. But how are they to know? They are essentially the guinea pigs for this experiment. Episode five sees Sean and Dirk slacking off, a normal thing apparently for them to do as we learn, and this annoys everyone. Their tribe loses immunity, and at tribal council, Dirk is voted off four to one to one. The tribe has spoken. Episode six sees Toggy lose the reward challenge, and while so far the immunity challenges have flip-flopped on who wins them, Overall, it seems like Pagong might be the stronger tribe. However, in bigger news, Richard Hatch has gone naked. He runs around pretty often with uh, clothes on, and he don't think nothing of it. I don't agree with his lifestyle, and I told him that, and he probably don't agree with mine. I finally went along with this alliance, and, and if I didn't, I'd be out of here probably the next vote or the, the one after. I think with an alliance that we establish here, we can do very, very well. If you don't, uh, you're out. Exactly. Tell, Tell me what book. option you have, Rudy. It's like a business deal. I mean, if, if we're both businessmen, I don't care if he's queer or not. We're doing business, and 
I probably did business with a lot of queers, but I didn't know it. You know, you think they wouldn't do it to us? No, of course they, they wouldn't. I don't think somebody's in control of our group in particular. I think I'm in control of who's being voted off. And I think that's all that matters to me. Six days ago, I was 180 out, but uh, I seen the light. It's, uh, if you want to win this money, you got to get a little dirty. They would never allow anyone to do what Rich is doing anymore. But more importantly is that Rudy smartly agreed to the alliance because without it, he very well could have been next. It just makes strategic sense. We then see Toggy win immunity by mere seconds. And in episode seven, it is time for the merger, as everyone calls it. And we see Dr. Sean go and visit the Pagong camp and Jenna Lewis come and visit Toggy's. In a blink and you miss it moment, their kitchen area is called Rowdy Rudy's Diner, but more importantly is how Jenna won't shut up and Rudy calls her a loudmouth. And we learn that Pagong has heard rumors that Toggy has formed an alliance. What the heck? How would anyone on Pagong hear about this? Is production telling each tribe things they shouldn't be knowing? How else could anyone who isn't on Toggy know about this? I am baffled. Jenna Lewis then goes to an overnight retreat with Dr. Sean to discuss which camp they will stay at. And Rudy says, finally, he gets a break from her because as he says, she's a loud mouth. The next day we see that ultimately it was decided to have everyone live on Toggy's beach and strategically, it is important to know that while the tribes are evened up five to five, Dr. Sean is not in the Toggy Alliance because he's morally opposed to it. And uh, Pagong, they're kind of not unified at all. They're a mess. So five to five isn't really as accurate as it sounds. Hopefully this won't bite Taki in the butt though. We then see Jenna, the one who talks a lot that Rudy called a loud mouth saying that Rudy doesn't talk as much as she would like. I think uh, Rudy's very set in his ways. So having, you know, five new people move in, it scared him a lot. So he was just sitting back and he was assessing the situation, I think. All of a sudden we doubled our population. The the, the house got smaller, the pots got smaller, and uh, personally, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> Rudy is a gold mine. His delivery on things he says lets him get away with almost anything. That night, everyone is talking very gratuitously about their sex lives, and Rudy says this doesn't interest him. And if they were all in the military, they would be court-martialed for this kind of talk, including him for being there when they did it. Later on, five of the women, that's what they said, are cuddling with Rudy for warmth. And the next morning, they're like, he was a pain in the butt to cuddle with. He kept kicking us in the head when he went up to go to the bathroom. And Rudy straight up says, I don't care. Amazing. Greg of Pagong wins individual immunity, so at Tribal Council, it is time to vote someone off. Jenna. Colleen. Rudy. Rich. Sue. Jervis. Gretchen. Oh my God. Gretchen. Oh my God. Travis spoken. Wow, that was huge. A four to one to one to one to one to one to one vote. The next day people are like, whoa, I think there is an alliance in this game. And Sean says, there's no good reason to even have an alliance other than strategy. But more importantly is that a lot of people seem upset that there is an alliance since they view it as immoral. Rudy says no one better flip on him or else. It's cut and dried that we can eliminate somebody every time. And if we don't, I'll have to break somebody's kneecap or something. If anyone else said that, it might be threatening. But when Rudy says it, it's hilarious. Though I am 90% sure he is serious. Rudy has gotten even more crotchety though since people have arrived at this camp and says all these extra people around is ruining the food supply. But thankfully, Richard is a fishing beast as he constantly provides fish and food. And it's a big reason no one's targeting him. But surprise, Jeff Probst pops into their camp with a TV and a VCR so they can see videotapes from home. They get to see a little snippet and they're going to compete in a reward challenge to view the whole tape. We see Rudy's wife of 45 years, but as expected, Rudy hides his emotions and when Jenna doesn't get a tape, she cries, and we see everyone around her consoling her, except Rudy and Richard. The show specifically makes sure not to show them not caring, which is so, so funny. Greg wins the reward challenge, and with that, everyone gets to see the full tape from his sister, and... Mooka looka, mau mau, ping ping. How are you doing? 
Just remember who loves you. Sis. You're on, buddy. Okay. Hi, Julie. We feel like we could feel you, and we felt you. I, some of us felt you, and others just imagine what it's like to feel you. <laughs> Why not make illusions? It crosses all those borders. God, what are people gonna think? And then, sexual illusions for my sister? What's gonna happen? It sounded like Greg was uh, talking maybe incest. That's the way it sounded to me. Julie, we gotta put up with this for about two more weeks, and uh, then we might kill him. Is that doing you a favor? I'm with Rudy. It's a bit strange. Jervis wins immunity and at Tribal Council, Jeff goes hard grilling the Toggy Four Alliance and everyone just denies, denies, denies. They're not giving Jeff anything. So they all go to vote and... Jenna. Jenna. Jeff. Greg. 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 Greg, the tribe has spoken. <laughs> I believed him for a minute. Episode 9 sees Rich saying Jeff sucks as a host since he keeps trying to blow up their game. But then we see how Pagong has pegged Rich as the Toggy leader and Rudy is very low on everyone's radar, which is great for Rudy. But then we see Rich catch a bunch of fish again and for some reason this time Rudy has no idea how to cook it. I mean I think he's been cooking it all season but now he's just forgotten how to do it or he's being stubborn about it. Either way, everyone, even his best friend Richard, hates this. Now, I'm not sure if the last event and the next event are connected, but they both happen in this order as uh, Rich is naked again. When I go home, my wife asks me about who is with you. I'll say a queer that ran around bare ass half of the time, for one thing. Rudy is funny about it, but unlike Toggy, who kind of laughed it off earlier this season, the Pagong members have very little tolerance for Toggy's uh, shtick and hate this. At the immunity challenge, color me surprised, but with the help of the Toggy members who get eliminated, Rudy wins immunity. I mean, they literally talk him through how to win. Wow. I don't think he was going anywhere, but good for him. Back at camp, the women are being fun and goofy, and Rudy, he doesn't get it at all. I thought about a female alliance and watching them the way they walk around hand in hand. Uh, I even thought about lesbianism, but uh, maybe not. I don't know. And uh, it. It could happen if they had any brains, but I don't think they got enough brains to do that. I think it's a generational gap. I I think it's I think that's the best way to put it. But then a funny development takes place. Dr. Sean has a new strategy he calls the alphabet strategy, where uh, yeah he's just basically voting in alphabetical order. There's nothing else to it. A silly idea on its face, and even sillier that he tells everyone because the Toggy Alliance decides to take advantage of this, and that tribal council. Rich. Jenna. Rich. Jenna. Rich. Jenna. The last vote. J or Jenna. Jenna, the tribe has spoken. We go to episode 10, and I kid you not, when Dr. Sean says, he isn't 100% sure there aren't any alliances yet. Like, dude, are you serious? We've had three post-merge votes and he hasn't figured it out yet. What? Jervis then receives news that the girl he got pregnant, about nine months ago obviously, just birthed his child and everyone gives their opinions on having kids out of wedlock with Rudy saying back in his day it was unheard of to have a kid outside of wedlock and kids behaving badly is commonly blamed on the school system when the problems begin way before the kids ever go to school. It's the parents screwing them up or the lack of parents. He says they need a supporting family to grow up right. And uh, amen to that, Rudy, ain't that the truth? Which is so funny that he's that insightful when the next thing we hear from him is how in 10 days, he says he doesn't plan on seeing any of these people ever again. And that's just the way he likes it. Rudy is too funny, but trouble is a brewing in the Toggy Four Alliance as Kelly is now anti-alliance and Strip says working with Richard Hatch is like working with the devil. Why? Because the Pagong members have made her feel bad about the alliance. Basically, it's very silly. So we go to tribal council where Jervis voted off easily. Tribe has spoken. 
We then go to episode 10, where there is a reward challenge they cut from the show that has everyone guessing how much weight they have lost so far, and it turns out Rudy has lost 18 pounds. Back at camp, Toggy is painted as evil for having an alliance. I mean, what else is new? And I can't wait for Colleen to be voted off so we can stop hearing this insane take. At this rate, Toggy is sitting in the final two so the alliance won't matter when it comes time to pick a winner. Or will it? Rich and Rudy then make a promise to each other to be in the final two together. And Rudy says, if you're lying to me, it's going to cost you big time. Somebody gave me their word that they are in this alliance with me. And I give my word. My word is good. And uh, their word better be good. If they betray me, uh, I'll get even with them. Rudy talks about it, and people give me their word, and don't, I have friends. I have friends back at home that take care of people like that. I don't know who I'm playing with here. I'm like, get me out of here. Yeah. Send me home. Rudy, <laughs> something else. I mean, it's, it's a game, but it's uh, worth a million dollars. Money talks. You pretty much got Rudy yeah. under control. Yeah, he always just looks to me and goes, hey, who? I don't care. Don't, don't worry about it. You have my word and I gave it to you. Kelly wins immunity and at tribal council, Pagong is finally all eliminated as Colleen is voted off. Colleen, the tribe has spoken. Episode 12 sees Kelly and Sue fight. But why? Well, as it turns out, Kelly has now flipped on the Toggy Alliance twice. Once during the Jenna vote and the second time during the Colleen vote. And Sue takes this very very personally. Kelly's plan, as it appears to us, is to appease the Pagong members and make her look like she was never a part of this alliance to begin with. So if she's at the end, they'll vote for her. But then a very early 2000s thing happens when Survivor embraces the Blair Witch Project. Survivor Witch Project, Pagong Beach, sundown. Behind each mask is a question. Take the video camera, point it at yourself, record the answer. First one back with all the correct answers wins immunity. Survivor's ready. Go. Well, well, it's fair to in the air to conch show. I don't know. What is the one event that has overshadowed the departure to most of the survivors from tribal council? I don't know. If the spirits cause you to become lost in the jungle, what should you do to find your way home? I don't know. I guess you get to keep this. There you go. Good job, Kelly. I don't know. Amazing. Just amazing. Why is it amazing? I don't know. Well, Kelly wins immunity, so no matter how much they all now want to target her, she's safe. And Dr. Sean has to be voted off instead. At Tribal Council, Jeff asks what will happen once this game is over. And Rudy says again that he hopes that uh, he just shakes their hands and never has to see them again. So they all go to vote, and Dr. Sean is gone. The tribe has spoken. The jungle has spoken. Right, time for you. It began with 16 survivors. Let's do it! It became a national phenomenon. And the number one show in America. This Wednesday, it all comes down to one final vote and one incredible night of TV. The Survivor finale is so amazing, so top secret, we can't show you a single second. Who will be the ultimate survivor? Find out on the two-hour finale. Then we're reuniting the castaways live. You can't miss the final night of Survivor, CBS Wednesday. Finale time. Unless Sue or Kelly win the remaining immunity challenges, then it should be Rich versus Rudy in the final two. But uh, I gotta say, this finale is so slow now that it's just them and everyone is just outright bored. And I'm a little bored too. Rudy says it's every man for themselves now. They then get tree mail that indicates winning the next immunity will require knowing the tribe mates that they have been voting off so far. And uh, Rich jokes that Rudy will be the worst at this since he doesn't even know that Dr. Sean is a doctor. Rudy says, don't know, don't care. As it turns out, Rich does the worst of them all, which is funny given what he just said. And Kelly wins immunity again. So Sue is voted off. The tribe has spoken. Early the next morning, Jeff comes and wakes them up and says, time for an immunity challenge. You all are going to put your hands on an idol and see who lasts the longest. Yeah, that's it. Weirdly enough, Rich drops on purpose and says he did this knowing both Kelly and Rudy will take him to the final two. And this way, he doesn't have to get any blood on his hands to make the call on who he sits next to. Basically, I think Rich is trying to avoid sitting next to Rudy at the end, but he knows if he cuts Rudy, Rudy ain't gonna vote for him. You know what I mean? Jeff cannot understand the strategy for the life of him, so it is down to Rudy and Kelly. And... Did you take his hand off? There you go. Five in That's a, a record. 
Yeah, that's game. Rudy is generally liked and Rich has flat out been disliked by so many people. So uh, yeah, it's going to be an easy decision for Kelly. Back at camp, Rudy says, I made a dumb move and gave away a million dollars and it's only my fault, no one else's. I love that he doesn't blame Rich for dropping because, I mean, he's right. If Rudy had just hung on, he would have won. So when Kelly goes to vote at Tribal Council, The 14th person voted off the island is Rudy. In this case, Kelly has spoken. By the way, stick around until after the resolution for a bonus section of the video I think you will really like. So let's break this down. How is Rudy as a character? Crotchety, fun, and one of a kind. Not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but to this day, there has not been another person on Survivor quite like Rudy. He is a goldmine for jokes, and the way he expresses his opinions, even if you don't agree with him, makes perfect sense why he thinks the way he does. At 72 years old, he is way more compelling of a character than so many that come after him and are so much younger. Why? I don't know. Out of 23 character moments shown on the show, 14 were heroic and 9 were villainous, making Rudy Bosch a hero on Survivor Borneo. Now how is Rudy as a strategist? Honestly, not great, and yet he came so close to winning it all. Rudy had to be heavily convinced by Richard to join the Toggy 4 Alliance, and he came so close multiple times to being voted off. So it took a long, long time to become part of the Alliance, so he's lucky he didn't get voted off, but once he did join, he was good. Everyone knew they could count on him. Rudy wouldn't lie to anyone to make them feel good. He just said things as he saw them, which people respected. If he sat next to any of the others from the Toggy 4 Alliance, he likely wins, in my opinion. But I do wonder if Rich could have beaten him at the end. But that is something I'm constantly debating on and I'm not locked into. Out of 28 strategic moments shown on the show, 18 were smart and 10 were dumb, making Rudy Bosch a smart strategist on Survivor Borneo. So, uh, yeah. Welcome to the bonus section of the video. Why am I covering Rudy's second time playing Survivor on a video about his Borneo run? I don't know. 39 days, 18 all-stars, one Survivor. Survivor All-Stars takes place seven years after Borneo and it features 18 returning players on three tribes. Rudy is on the Yellow Saboga tribe along with Tina Wesson, Ethan's on, Jerry Manthe, Rupert Boneham, and Jenna Lewis, aka The Loudmouth, as he has called her. Does he like any of these people? I don't know. But he is now 75 years old and he's still playing Survivor. All tribes are given a pot and a map to the water while at their camp and uh, that's it. Nothing more. It's so much less than they were given in Borneo. Upon arriving at the Saboga camp, the others ask Rudy for help with their water well map and... Rudy! <laughs> what do I look like? Though? Okay. 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 Amazing, Rudy hasn't changed at all despite becoming so popular after Borneo. Saboga does find the dirty water which Rudy drinks and everyone's like, whoa, what are you doing? There's parasites in there. And he's like, eh, whatever. And then the tribe tries to make fire and they fail. Then, while sitting around, Rudy makes an offer. You know, I think uh, me and you ought to think about an alliance. You're a man of your word, too, from what I know of you. Yeah. I am, too. Rudy looks at me, and the first time he sees me, you know, all tie-dyed and hippie, he looked right through it and wanted to be my buddy. I uh, figured me and Rupert ought to protect ourselves and form an alliance, and that's what we did. He says, uh, I can depend on you, and he says, you can depend on me. That's all I gotta hear. Considering Rupert's whole season hasn't aired on TV yet, this is a bold move by Rudy, but uh, it's also a good call, as we know. Rupert is very loyal, and also very stubborn, just like Rudy. We then go to the immunity challenge where we see Sue Hawk is back, and also Richard Hatch is too. They're on different tribes but uh, Richard's more arrogant than ever before. Their tribe loses immunity and back at camp, Jenna, the loudmouth, says the winners need to go. They already won. So at tribal council. Jenna. Tina. Jenna. Two votes, Jenna. Tina. Three votes, Tina. First person voted out of Survivor all Star. Tina. Tina, the tribe has spoken. I guess at the rate we're going, Ethan's on is next, though if I were Rudy and Rupert, I would align with him since he's also loyal and they can just knock out Jerry and Jenna while they can. Unfortunately, they aren't given fire from tribal council, so back at camp they still don't have clean water and Rudy says this kind of reminds him of Vietnam. Vietnam is the same as this place and you get wet and you your wet. boots never dry. You were in Vietnam? Yeah. 
We were down in the Mekong Delta. You were scared? Was I scared? Yeah, about the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't taste like rot. I'm still standing at noon. Uh, <clears throat> don't drink it. <laughs> water contamination will hit you pretty quick. But once Rudy decides he wants to drink the well water, there's no t telling him no. He does what he wants. There used to be a little bar next to where we, we lived in Mito. You know, they'd serve ice, which was rare. And uh, I asked them, Where, where'd you get the water? They said, the reservoir. At any given time, you could see six bodies floating around that reservoir. You know? uh, <laughs> did you drink it with ice? Yeah. Oh, and I should worry about this. <laughs> wow. That dark humor is so on point with so much of what you hear in the military. It's the best way to cope with all the nonsense you have to deal with when serving. Trust me. They do win the reward challenge, which nets them a flint and pot. And back at camp, they finally make fire, which has Rupert wildly overreacting. However, Rudy hurt his foot and everyone has noticed. And he says, ah, it'll probably be better in a week. But a week in survivor time is like three episodes. So Bogo loses immunity again. And Rupert says, Rudy is a hero who deserves to be there. But at Tribal Council. Ethan. Rudy. Ethan. Rudy. Second person voted out of the Saboga tribe. Rudy. Rudy. The tribe has spoken. I talked to these people about two hours ago and everything was all set up uh, to vote Ethan off. If I was them, I'd stay clear of me. When people lie to me, I get even. They just better watch their step for a long time. I got a lot of friends. So what do you think about Rudy Bosch? Could he have beaten anyone on Borneo if he were sitting at the end? Comment below and let me know. Thank you for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.